Welcome to today's shootout. That's shoot, not shoot. This one is between Sulkanese Kinvara 14 and the Brooks Hyperion. Let's get into it. What's up, friends? It's Matt B. This video is in partnership with Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me both of these shoes, the Brooks Hyperion and the Sulkany Kinvara 14. However, they are not going to get to see this video before you do. And with that, these shoes are actually pretty comparable. More comparable than I thought they were when I first thought about it. Both of these shoes are very light. They're both non-plated. They're both made for the same type of runs. You know, kind of like your faster workouts and maybe a non-plated race shoe. But there are some differences. And at the end, I'm going to want to know which one you prefer. Oh, and whichever shoe you prefer, whichever shoe you want to pick up, I'll place links in the show notes below. Let's start off with price. The Kimbara 14 will cost you $120. The Brooks Hyperion will cost you $140. Both are extremely well priced. Obviously, the Kimbara 14 is $20 cheaper, but I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough of a reason to skew you to the Saucony. And there are some things that you are getting with the Brooks Hyperion that you're not getting with the Saucony Kinvara 14. So don't rule out the Brooks just because this is a bit cheaper. The Kinvara 14 has 31 millimeters in the heel, 27 millimeters in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. Now, Brooks lists the stack height of the Hyperion at 22 and 14, but that's not true. It's probably a case of Brooks reporting the stack height, but not including the insole and the outsole. What we do know for sure is that the Brooks Hyperion has an eight millimeter drop. And just by Looking at both shoes, I'm just going to estimate that the Brooks Hyperion has 31 in the heel and 23 in the forefoot. It's going to be somewhere around there. So ultimately, we've got 8mm drop in the Brooks and we've got a 4mm drop in the Saucony. Now I can feel it. People are starting to pick sides. Runners can get very particular about their drops. And if you like a super low drop, Invara could be the way to go. Oh, both of these are neutral running shoes. They don't provide any stability elements. So let's talk about weight. Saucony claims that in a US men's size 9, the Kinvara 14 tips the scale at 7 ounces or 200 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, the Kinvara 14 tips the scale at 8.3 ounces or 235 grams. It's a pretty light shoe. First of all, let's just take a look at both shoes. Maybe it doesn't come across well on camera, but to me, the Kinvara 14 looks a lot lighter than the Brooks Hyperion. But with that said, the Brooks Hyperion isn't exactly heavy. In fact, it's Brooks's lightest training shoe. And Brooks claims that in a US men's size 9, the Hyperion tips the scale at 7.6 ounces or 215.5 grams. In my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 9.1 ounces or 250 59 grams. Again, it's a very light shoe. It is about 10% heavier than the Kinvara 14, but they are both crazy light. And honestly, because they're so light, I don't think the weight alone is a reason to pick one over the other. The Kinvara 14 is using a dual layer mesh. Now, it's very like a wide weave mesh right on the top, and then underneath there's another layer of mesh just to give a little protection. But in between this wide weave mesh on the top, we've got like little shiny filaments, which gives the Kinvara 14 just a little bit of bling. And I'm a fan of the bling. But the Kinvara 14, just as it looks, it is it's a very light, very breathable upper. Now, when I compare it to the Brooks Hyperion, I think the Brooks Hyperion looks a little more traditional, at least as far as the upper goes, but appearances can be deceiving because I think when I'm looking at this shoe, it looks like it's a heavier upper, but really when I look closely, I can see right through the upper. It's super light. In fact, it's a new upper. It's Brooks' new warp knit upper. And perhaps it's just this colorway that makes it look a little thicker, but it's it's really not. It is super breathable. And I wish you could actually feel how light the Hyperion is because it's totally deceiving. I think it looks like a much heavier shoe than it really is. But it's gotta be light, remember. These are some performance trainers. These are the shoes that you're gonna be knocking out those faster workouts in. These are shoes that you're probably gonna choose if you wanna knock out a 5K, but you don't want a plated shoe. But these shoes are light enough that they just disappear on your foot when you start running. The Kinvara 14 does have a gusseted tongue. It's super thin. We can see the tongue coming right up here. Found the tongue on the Kinvara 14 to just be, I don't know, maybe a little long for my taste. Maybe they could take just a little off the top next time, but that really doesn't encroach on any performance. It's only when it's on my foot and I'm kind of pulling it into place that I notice that. But I kind of feel like that's just me being a little picky. If you look around the heel collar, you'll see it's fairly thin. Now it's not a race day shoe, remember that. It's still a trainer, but there is, there's a fair amount of padding here. I think this is fairly indicative of what Saucony does with their trainers. A lot of Saucony shoes do have a very thin heel collar. That doesn't take away from the padding. I think Saucony just kind of cuts down on any unnecessary padding. For a shoe that is so light and wispy with such a light breathable upper, it's almost surprising that the heel counter is so rigid. In fact, because of this wide mesh upper, you can see the heel counter. You can see it kind of come down the side and it's just it's impossible to push that down. We do have this elasticated heel pull right on the back. And just because of this heel counter, it provides a lovely lockdown. Now, as far as the upper goes, there are very minimal overlays. Obviously, we've got the branding on both the lateral and the medial side. And then if you look around here, coming all the way around the back, we've got some faux suede. This faux suede has some machine drilled holes in it. And it's just a nice little accent. It adds something to the shoe, gives a little stability to the heel collar. Now, one complaint that I've had with the Kinvara 14, and you're looking at it right now, even if you haven't noticed, is the eyelet chain. Do you see how close the eyelet chain is 
this together. It just tells me, at least for my foot, and admittedly my foot is fairly narrow, but it tells me that the Kambara 14 just has a little more volume in the upper than I ideally need. You can see this just because even when I've taken my foot out of the shoe, you can see that I've had to cinch these eyelet chains together in order to get a good lockdown. Now look, this is just aesthetic. It didn't change the performance. It actually locked down very well. It just doesn't look like it fits my foot as well as some other shoe. Does that make sense? All right, let's go to the Brooks. Now the tongue on the Brooks Hyperion does have a lace loop right in the middle. It's also gusseted, but it's only gusseted on the medial side. But even though it's only partially gusseted, I never had any problems with the tongue moving around on me when I had the shoe locked in. The heel collar on the Brooks Hyperion, it's, it's actually fairly similar to the Saucony Kimbara in that it's thin, but it's not too thin. There's enough padding here where it doesn't feel like that the shoe is rubbing against you. It's nice and comfortable and it holds my foot very well. Again, with the heel counter, just like with the Kimbara 14, it's super rigid, guys. And that's good because when we're running fast, it has the chance to create a lot of movement if our foot isn't dialed into the shoe correctly. And I found the fit of the Brooks Hyperion to just be spot on. No movement when I'm running fast. Good heel lockdown, good lockdown across my midfoot and nice and breathable. And if you look at this lace loop, this line of the eyelid chain, you can see that there is a big difference between this and the Kimbara 14. Clearly, at least for my foot, the Brooks Hyperion fits my foot a little better. I think this is a more normal amount of spacing between the eyelid chains. But again, if I was blindfolded and I was to, to run in both of these shoes at the same time, the fit is fairly similar. I wouldn't be able to tell any difference just because I have to cinch these shoes a little tighter. Overlays on the Brooks Hyperion are super minimal. We got the, the branding, got some reinforcements along the eyelet chain, and just a little bit of reflective accents right here on the back. The black dashes that you're seeing right on the gray upper, those aren't holes or anything, that's just a different color of the upper. But just feeling it, it's not an overlay, it's just the styling of the shoe. Now let's come down to the midsole, because now we're going to be talking about the differences. At least to me, this is where the main difference of these two shoes comes up. The Saucony Kinvara 14 is using their Power Run midsole. Power Run is an EVA foam. Then we have a Power Run Plus sock liner. Power Run Plus is a PU foam. This sock liner here, this insole, is actually fairly thick, and that is obviously contributing to the soft ride of the Kinvara 14. The Brooks Hyperion, on the other hand, is using Brooks DNA Flash midsole. Now it's a nitrogen infused midsole, and actually DNA Flash is probably my favorite foam that Brooks makes. I just love it. The ride is a little firm, but the energy return is fantastic. Okay, let's take a look at the outsoles. Can you notice a difference? I don't know. Maybe the really observant of you can notice a difference, but if you can't, I'll point it out. The Brooks Hyperion has far more outsole rubber than the Kinvara 14. In fact, the Kinvara 14 only has outsole rubber in their lateral heel area and right at the front. And obviously this is strategically placed rubber. I mean, all rubber is strategically placed on running shoes. I think Brooks even uses that in their copy for the Hyperion. But seriously, when it comes to strategically placed rubber, the Kinvara 14 has it. This is right here where heel strikers are gonna hit and then right here at the front where you toe off. All the rest is going to be an exposed EVA. The Brooks Hyperion on the other hand has a lot of rubber here on the forefoot and right here on the heel, right where you need it. And Brooks does say that this outsole rubber is strategically placed to conserve weight and promote fast transitions. I like it. Obviously, it's a very light shoe and it's a very fast shoe. So whatever strategy they're using to place this rubber, I think it's working. Now let's talk about ride. And this is the main difference, guys. We've been joking about weight and price and these little differences, but the ride is the reason that you are going to pick one over the other. And if I had to put it down into one or two words, well, let's say one word for each shoe. I'm going to say firm and I'm going to say soft. And of course, the words firm and soft operate on a continuum, but compared to the Brooks Hyperion, the Kimbara 14 is soft. And compared to the Kimbara 14, the Brooks Hyperion is firm. I don't think the Brooks Hyperion is too firm and I certainly don't think the Kinvara 14 is too soft. Now, because of their weight, I think both shoes are going to do their intended tasks very well. I think you're going to be able to pick up the pace and both of them are very fast. However, I think the Kinvara 14, at least this year, it was different last year. It's been different in previous iterations of the Kinvara, but this year I think the Kinvara 14 actually operates as a very light daily trainer. Or at least it's, it's not a daily trainer because I think this lack of outsole rubber is going to not make it as resilient as we want in a daily trainer, but it feels really good and it feels like the type of shoe that I could run in as a daily trainer. And what I mean by that is it feels good at slower paces and it picks up the paces very well. Now I also think that about the Brooks Hyperion but the difference is is that generally speaking I prefer a softer ride when I'm running easy and because this DNA flash in the Hyperion is a little firmer to me I immediately interpret the ride as wanting to go fast. Now the firmness might not just come down to the DNA flash being firmer than power run. It's also going to have a lot to do with the outsole because rubber as you know is firmer than foam and the Hyperion 
has a lot of rubber and the Kambara has almost none. So that alone is going to make the Kambara a much softer ride. Also, let's just bring it back to price for a minute. The Brooks Hyperion costs 16.67% more than the Kambara 14. Because of this outsole rubber, I'm going to say that the Brooks Hyperion will last you at least 16.67% more time and more distance than the Kambara 14. So again, I don't think the price is really that big of a difference. But all right, all right, I feel like you're trying to nail me down. Like, which one would I choose? And I'm going to hedge my bets and say it depends. Because if I was buying a shoe that was just made for faster workouts, I'm 100% going with the Brooks Hyperion. If I wanted a super light shoe that is going to run very fast, that is breathable, but also a shoe that I can use more on a daily basis and isn't going to beat me up, I'm 100% going with the Kevara 14. But guys, these shoes, they're both great. I don't want to persuade you into buying one over the other. Yes, they're very similar. And yes, they're very different. And with that, it's Matt B. This has been my shootout between the Kevara 14 and the Hyperion. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.